If you've ever had the chance to visit Isle Royale National Park, you know what a special place it is. The 45-mile-long island sits off the shore of Lake Superior. Grand Portage, Minnesota is the closest town on the mainland to it. And the small landmass is generating a big debate, though, over wolves and whether or not more should roam its forests there. Randy Meyer joining us. And Randy recently traveled there for a closer look at what's going on with the wolf moose population. And this is a serious subject. Yeah, it is quite a place, too, uh, Jeff and Kelsey. The debate has been going on for years now about whether to reintroduce wolves to Isle Royale. It's a decision the National Park Service will make within the next few weeks. And it's been going on for quite some time. It's been a complicated debate as well that takes into account the basics of nature, predator versus prey versus habitat, all of which are profoundly impacting one of the most pristine areas of the world. Isle Royal sits like a gem in a cold ring of Lake Superior water, some 15 miles off the shore of Grand Portage, Minnesota. Its isolation has been the island's preservation. It is today as a national park not much different than when Norwegian fishermen built the first fish camps like this one on its shores in the mid-1800s. A pristine island of some 210 square miles, it was a privilege for me to visit to see the young bull moose swimming across the bay on our boat trip in. Ooh. To come face to face with this cow moose freezing us in our steps on an island trail. I mean, I hadn't seen a moose here all summer. So that was pretty special. Oh, uh, that's pretty special. <laughs> that was a gift, definitely. Time spent here, you would think, simple. Until you consider the very complicated national debate over reintroducing wolves to Isle Royale. Ice bridges during the cold winter months enabled the first gray wolves to find the island 75 years ago, and they stayed because they found food in the moose. Over the decades, the predator-prey populations ebbed and flowed. It was a forest ecosystem that worked. Scientists studied it, but for the most part, stayed out of it. And then the ice bridges stopped forming, and the wolves, after peaking at 50, started dying. Canine parvo took many. Wolves killing other wolves took some. They died at an alarming rate, while the moose, with fewer canines to bring them down, grew in numbers of an equally alarming pace. Today, more than 1,600 moose roam Isle Royale, and with only two aging and non-breeding wolves left to hunt them, the National Park Service is wrestling with whether man should now step in and change the course of nature and the relative do-not-touch scientific philosophy of this national park by reintroducing a new pack of wolves taken from the mainland and deposited on the island. The predator-prey balance in Isle Royale has already clearly changed. And for the man who has spent 50 years of his life out here studying that dynamic and with the moose population trending up rapidly, in his view, doing nothing in this national park would be disastrous for its ecosystem. Is there a trail on this island where you haven't walked, do you think? No, no. <laughs> no way, right? No, I've walked all the trails. There's Rolf Peterson was a 22-year-old grad student when he first stepped foot on Isle Royale. There isn't a trail and barely a tree he doesn't know. He's known around the world for his wolf and moose research conducted right here year after year. No one knows more about the connection between a healthy wolf population, healthy moose population, and a healthy island than Peterson. Rolf, if wolves are not reintroduced to this island, what does it mean? What happens to the island in terms of that balance? Well, the moose will uh, destroy the forest. You know, it would take several decades and several ups and downs and population eruptions and crashes in moose, but basically the, the forest as we know it would uh, disappear. Moose love balsam fir. It's a major food source and the main tree of the island. These enormous herbivores will eat every seedling in sight. Peterson pointed us to the western part of Isle Royale. Over the decades, a small area overgrazed by moose. Today, it's a barren spruce and grass environment. And that, Peterson says, is what most of this national park could look like with a moose-only ecosystem. So you're an advocate of man stepping in, saying, OK, enough's enough. Let's, let's do something that ensures yeah. the future of this balance. Yeah, because the, the main issue here is there, there's a moose population that's 
it's like a runaway freight train right now. And if we just let it run away, it'll, it'll be to the detriment of the entire national park. Mm -hmm. Scientists and the National Park Service agree these two remaining wolves at age seven and nine will not live much longer and cannot affect a moose population that will likely double inside of five years, leaving the National Park Service now to decide who knows better, man or Mother Nature. Now, I spoke with the National Park Service this week, and there does seem to be movement not only toward a decision, but also toward reintroducing wolves. Officially, this is their statement. Take a look. NPS is currently producing a final environment packed impact statement with a preferred alternative to reintroduce wolves to the island. This alternative would provide a large enough number of wolves with the goal of establishing a healthy population that functions as an apex predator. A decision is expected after the document is released for public view. Most fully expect that final decision to be made within weeks, possibly sooner. So we're going to know possibly by the end of the year. Mm. It's funny how these things go back and forth because mm -hmm. in northern Minnesota just a couple of years ago, there was this shortage of moose. It's interesting, yeah. And they're trying to figure out what to do. And now you get out to Isle Royal and it's kind of flip flop. Well, the moose population in Isle Royal is not affected by the things that are killing moose on the mainland because they've never been exposed to the ticks and the things that the, that the whitetail population have brought on. Mm -hmm. So they don't have the brain worm problems on the island. So there's really, other than the, the wolves, there's nothing that's killing the moose except old age. Mm. Well, it's a beautiful place to this live. This is fascinating. Yeah. And, you know, it would be tough to be a decision maker in this process. Well, it's partly why it's gone on so long. And I think there was a hope, there was a hope held out that the wolves would reproduce and create another pack, and it just didn't happen. It didn't happen. All right. Thanks. Thanks.